Hello, my name is Lily Novak Fraser, and I'm a clinical scientist with the Mycology Reference Centre at the Manchester University Foundation Trust Hospital, located at Withenshaw Hospital. I work in this laboratory processing specimens that arrive to us from Manchester, but also from that arrive from all over the United Kingdom. My specialty is molecular diagnostics, that is, using molecular tools to identify fungal infections. And today, I'll be talking to you about how we detect aspergillosis. Aspergillosis is difficult to diagnose. There are broadly three types of conditions, invasive aspergillosis, chronic pulmonary aspergillosis, and allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Sometimes one type of aspergillosis can develop into another, such as the allergic condition worsening to become chronic aspergillosis. The symptoms can be nonspecific and broadly mimic a number of other serious infections or cancer. Therefore, it's essential to have defined indicators to be able to diagnose and treat aspergillosis correctly. A number of guidelines have been developed over the last 20 years to help diagnose the different forms of aspergillosis. The guidelines were developed by research scientists, clinicians, and experts to help define important criteria for the three different diseases and help doctors diagnose aspergillosis. The criteria are based on host or patient factors, clinical features, and mycological evidence. Host factors define whether the patient is immunocompromised or not, and this will make a big difference to how the patient responds to treatment. Clinical features define the state of the lungs and are based on radiological findings, either by performing x-rays or, more definitively, computed tomography, or CT as we know it. And mycological evidence describes the number and tests of number of and types of tests we have to analyze specimens to determine the cause of infection. Depending on which aspergillosis is being considered, there will be different tools that you can use to diagnose, although a number of tool, tools that we have can be used to diagnose any of the three types of aspergillus, as you'll see later. This slide shows a summary of the important diagnostic criteria for invasive aspergillosis, which was the first condition to be characterized in this way. Interestingly, the specialized conditions of influenza-associated and COVID-associated pulmonary aspergillosis are now also recognized and have can be and similar mycological tools can be used to diagnose these conditions. Also the although the patient factors and the clinical features are very different to the normal invasive condition. In addition to the host factors and clinical features, the mycological evidence can be derived by direct microscopy or histopathology, which means observing fungal elements in fresh or fixed tissues or bronchoalveolar lavage or bowel. Culture can be used to grow the mold Aspergillus fumigatus, which is the main causal organism of aspergillosis. Biomarker assays, such as galactomannan, can be used, and galactomannan is a soluble polysaccharide that is produced by growing molds. And PCR, which is now a molecular test that detects fungal DNA in blood or respiratory specimens, and this can also be used in conjunction with the other tests. If we look at the diagnostic guidance provided for chronic pulmonary, pulmonary aspergillosis, the mycological tools that we use to diagnose this condition are broadly similar to those used for invasive aspergillosis, except that these patients are usually immunocompetent. An important difference is that sputum culture and sputum aspergillus PCR are now also available as tests whose results are significant for this condition. This is because these patients are able to produce sputum, sometimes in copious amounts. 
At this center, we also use serological tests to monitor patient progress. Finally, when considering allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, again, the host factor defining characteristic is that the patients are immuno generally immunocompetent. Much of the same cl clinical features and mycological tools used to diagnose and monitor patients with chronic aspergillosis are also used for patients with the allergic condition, except, of course, that serological tests play a much more significant role in this type of aspergillosis. Sputum culture combined with sputum detection, PCR detection of aspergillus DNA in respiratory samples form the main duo of tools we use to diagnose chronic and allergic aspergillosis. Critically, for any of the aspergillosis conditions, we rely on at least two mycological criteria combined with positive indicators of the clinical features and the host factor criteria to diagnose aspergillosis. That means that we never use only one test to diagnose aspergillosis. It has to be a combination of factors and tests that achieve the final diagnosis. This is a summary of the mycological tests we use at the MRCM to diagnose aspergillosis. And you can see by the green ticks that some tests are more appropriate for some conditions than others, although there's a lot of crossover if you look at the green ticks at the, in the lower part of the table. Biomarkers provide a measure, a quantitative measure, of the circulating fungal um, indicators, soluble fungal indicators in both patient sera and in brachial alveolar lavage. The two tests we perform that are biomarkers at the MRCM are galactomannan and beta-D-glucan, although beta-D-glucan is more of a generic fungal marker. We also perform serology testing, and that specifically consists of aspergillus fumigatus IgG, aspergillus fumigatus IgE, and total IgE. And if you remember, these tests are particularly important for monitoring the state of as allergic aspergillosis patients and how they're progressing, although they can be used to kind of monitor chronic aspergillosis patients as well. Two of the very important features of mycological tests that we perform at MRCM are fungal culture and susceptibility testing. A fungal culture can also be supplemented with sequencing. We use high volume culture of respiratory specimens, sometimes of blood as well, to be able to have the best chance of growing Aspergillus fumigatus in culture. If conveyed by conventional microscopy and conventional tests, we're not able to identify the species, we then turn to Sanger ITS and other gene sequencing to provide the fungal identification. Once we know what the organism is, and in this case, we're interested in Aspergillus fumigatus, we can perform susceptibility testing. That's performed using UCAS standards. And susceptibility testing means that what we're trying to do is establish which antifungal drugs will be effective against the organism in question. We do testing for all azoles, as well as Amphotericin B and other test antifungals that we um, have in our collection. Once we perform this susceptibility testing, we can advise the clinicians as to which azole or amphotericin B or other drug that they need to use to treat the patient. And that's when therapeutic drug monitoring really comes into its own and is critical to for patient success. And that what this means is that we're measuring the amount of antifungal drug that is in the patient's system, and we do that by measuring their um, amount of drug in their serum. We measure all the azoles. That is to make sure that the level of azoles in the patient's system is at therapeutic uh, levels and not at toxic levels, either being too, too concentrated or not concentrated enough has serious consequences for the patient. 
And these drugs are not easy to take. They have lots of side effects and also interfere with other drugs that the patients may be taking. So therapeutic drug monitoring is essential. Finally, we have molecular testing, and that consists of aspergillus quantitative PCR and molecular detection of azole resistance, which is a new um, sequencing method that we developed in this laboratory. These, the molecular testing can be used for all forms of, in, of aspergillosis. I've also included here some information about how to find our website, where you can view all our catalog of tests, their costs, and how to order them using the request form. In addition to that, if you're a clinician or clinical scientist and you need details about what tests to order and which specimen container, for example, to use, you can visit the web link at the top of this page and follow the handbook live links, there are two of them, to the links to the pathology handbook where all our tests are detailed in chapter 10. However, you can always give us a call and we'll be happy to explain the tests we provide and help you in that way as well. I hope you've been able to understand some things that we do with respect to diagnosis and I hope I've provided you with an overview of how we perform diagnostic tests to diagnose aspergillosis. Thank you very much.